Welcome to this introduction video for the Ultimate Radio Menu. The goal of this video is to help you know what you can expect out of this asset. We will briefly go over four different aspects of the Radio Menu. First, we're going to talk about the different scripts and how you can use them. Second, we're going to go over how to create an Ultimate Radio Menu in your scene. Third, we're going to go over the inspectors and things to note when customizing your Radio Menu. And finally, we're going to talk about the interactable README file and how to use the information in there if you ever get stuck. So let's talk about the different scripts and what you can get out of them. So let's go into the scripts folder and we can see that we have five different scripts in here. And the first one that we want to look at is the ultimate radio menu. So the ultimate radio menu script takes care of the bulk of everything to do with the radio menu. It takes care of all of the buttons and everything else like that. So that's going to be the main script that we're going to be using. Then the next one is the input manager, and this is where you'll customize what input you're going to be using, um, it, be it mouse and keyboard, controller, touch, anything like that. That'll be handled by the input manager. And then we have the ultimate radio menu pointer script, which is a little image that can go in the middle of your menu and point to which button is currently selected. Then we have the ultimate radio menu screen size updater, which is just a script that goes on the canvas so it can communicate when the canvas has changed size. So we won't have to worry about that one at all. And then the last one is the ultimate radio button info class. And this class is actually something that you'll use inside of your scripts um, to be able to communicate with the radio menu. But we're going to go over that in a later video when we talk about implementing the radio menu. So those are the main scripts and what they what they do. So we're actually going to look at how the, the second point here of how we can create an ultimate radio menu in our scene. So I'm going to go to a new scene and the quickest and fastest way that we're going to be able to create a menu in our scene is to actually just grab one of the prefabs um, that is provided in the download. So if you go to ultimate radio menu, then prefabs, you'll see the different styles here. So let's just go with a minimalist one just to get one started. And let's just bring out the seven. So as soon as you bring it out, it'll ask you where you want to be using this ultimate radio menu. Is it going to be world space or screen space? So let's just work in screen space really quick. So there we go. We have our ultimate radio menu inside of our scene. The other way that we can create a radio menu just really quickly is to create an empty UI game object by just going up to your canvas, right clicking and doing create empty. And then on that game object, add a component, go into ultimate radio menu and choose ultimate radio menu. Now you can see that there's little gizmos displayed for how many buttons you can have. And then you can choose your sprite that you want to be used for the buttons. And then you can generate that radio menu. But we're just going to use the prefab for now. So now we want to talk about the third point the inspectors and how to use them. So the ultimate radio menu, the inspector has been designed in a way to help increase workflow because every option you should only be able to or should only have to be visited once. So the first thing is the radio menu positioning where you want it positioned on the canvas. So we have things like horizontal and vertical position, the size of the menu. Um, we have the button radius. We have the button individual size. We have the angle offset if you want the menu at a certain angle, and then we can choose if we want it to be orbital rotation or not. And then also something inside of here is the input settings. So we can choose the minimum range that input will be um, transmitted to this radial menu and also the maximum range. And then we can also choose an infinite maximum range if you want it to regardless of where the input is, and then also the input angle if you have smaller buttons. Then we get into the radial menu options, and this is where you'll find options that affect the radial menu as a whole. So things like we can have the radial button sprite, we can change it to a different image. We can change the color of it to something that that is different. We can change how the menu toggles so we can see that we have an initial state where we can have it enabled or disabled when the game starts. We can also change if we want it to fade in and out when the, the radio menu is enabled and disabled through code. And you can change the options for the scale in and fade in durations. You can choose if you want center text. So for this, we can see 
We can have a name text and you get options for how you want that text to be um, positioned on the menu. And this would be something that the information you provide to the menu is dependent on the button name. So if you provide the name of, you know, potion or something else like that, it'll be displayed here on this center name text if you want that. And then we also have a description and you can have an item description that is actually inside the menu as well. So that's the menu text. And now when we uh, now we get to where it affects the buttons. So if you want to have icons on your menu, you can actually enable that here. And then we're just going to use a, a temporary sprite really quick to show what this looks like. But you can generate all of these icons for these buttons. And now when you generate the icons, you can change the size and positioning of them. You can change if you want them to be local rotation to their individual buttons and even the rotation offset of these icons. And of course, you can change the icon color as well. And then we get to the option for button text, and this is the text per button. So let's just generate some here really quick. And now we can see we have a text um, component per button and we can change its positioning option to local and we can change its position. Um, we can change its size, its ratio. Um, we can change if we want it, that local rotation or not. And we can change all those different settings for each button. So now we get into button interaction. And so this is what you'll be able to change for when the menu is interacted with, how it will um, appear visually to the user. So we, these first options are what you want the, the buttons to do. So we can um, change sprites when the, the menu is in different states. We can change the color and we can also scale the transform. And we can see the different states down here. We have normal, which is just when it's sitting idle, highlighted, pressed, selected, and disabled. And you can change all these different values inside of here and it will be automatically applied to the radial menu. We also have options um, because we have button icons inside of our menu, you can see that we can change the color of the icons depending on these button interaction states. We can also scale the transform of this so we can actually scale the icon up when it's highlighted. And we can also do the same thing for text. We can do a color change for the text when it's in these different states, either highlighted, pressed, selected, or disabled. So that's the button interaction. So that's how the buttons will be interacted with. So if we wanted these buttons to change to red when it's highlighted, we can see that we can just change that color to red. And then when we run the scene here, you can see that as we call up the menu, you can see that the highlighted button is turned red. And also inside of here, you can see that the button icon has changed to a color of white when the button is selected or when it's highlighted. So that's the button interaction set or uh, section. Now we get into the button or the radial button list. And this is each button individually, the different things that you want to change per button individually. So here is where you can disable the button, make it visually disabled. Um, you can change the icon that is assigned to this one. So we can just change it to the papers here. You can also invert the Y scale if that's something that you need for your icons. And also, because we understand that not all icons when you're making them are the same size, you can actually change this icon individually if you check that unique positioning option. Just know that when you um, select this unique positioning option, that it will not um, be able to be changed by your options up in here because now it's unique. So it will not change with the rotation offset of the whole menu. Um, it'll be unique to this button. And then you can also assign a different text. And then also you can use a Unity event if you wanted to call something when this button is interacted with. But we'll get into this in the next video. The last section here is the script reference section. And this is where once you give this radio menu a name, you'll be able to reference this through code without having a actual variable assigned for this radial menu. And again, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next video, but if you apply a name, we just apply the name menu, you can see that we have example code that has been generated for you to be able to copy and paste into your script. 
and it has the different functions um, that are available and you can choose those and it'll actually be able to uh, copy that code and put it into your scripts and it'll affect this menu specifically. So the last thing that we want to talk about in this video is the interactable readme file. And that can be found in the root ultimate radial menu folder under readme. And that's where you most likely found this video. So uh, first thing that we want to talk about is it will help you to be able to know how to get the ultimate radial menu um, assigned and how to get it working inside of your scripts. There's an example here to help show how it works. Then there's an overview, just like we talked about, about what is um, found in each section. And then there's a documentation section that goes over each function that you can find inside of the reference to the radial menu. So you see we can enable the radial menu, disable it, uh, create an empty one, remove all of them, set its position, and so on. And so we have static functions, public functions, and then events. And again, we'll be making another video specifically about the events and how to use those. But that basically sums up this introduction video. Hopefully this helps to get the ultimate radio menu, um, how you can understand it so you can put it in your project and get to know it a little bit better. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about a very simple example of how to get the ultimate radio menu to work with your own scripts.